So, uh, very good morning to all of you. Just to inform you, we are recording this lecture. Excuse me, sir. Yes, go ahead. On the Moodle page, we only have to upload the latex uh, file, right? No, no, no. Only the PDF. Only the PDF. Okay, okay. I think I should be able to make out if uh, that PDF has not been generated using mm -hmm. latex. So, all you have to do is to just upload the PDF. Okay, thank you. And I also created this group assignment for this note submission. So only, I believe, uh, one member of every group needs to uh, submit the notes for the entire group. Okay, then. I hope uh, the screen is visible. Yes. Yes, sir. Right for today. One zero zero seven. Remember, I'm waiting for the notes of the second class in order to upload the slides as well as the link to the video. Oh, we still have about a couple of minutes before we start the class. Uh, meanwhile, does anybody have any doubt? Any comments? So, are you feeling all right about the course, about the lectures? Sort of. Is the pace all right for everyone? Are we going too fast or too slow? Comments? Anybody? But please uh, feel free to express yourselves. I understand this is not the ideal medium of teaching, so you must let me know. There's no way I can make out whether things are going all right or not. And see your faces. And I don't want to sort of uh, get into too many evaluations. Don't want to put you under unnecessary stress. I have a quiz every lecture that may give me some feedback, but I just don't want to get into it. So it would be nice for me if uh, once in a while, some of you let me know if things are going well or not. And if not, what exactly is it that I need to work on? wait for another couple of minutes before we begin lecture three. Yes, sir, everything is fine.
Okay, we have crossed the 100 mark. Let's get started. All right, so before we get into the main concept in today's class, quick question. So let's say G is a group. Okay, and let's just pick any random element in this set G. Let's call it A. Uh, G comes with a binary operation. So if I apply the binary operation on the element A itself for I number of times, right, we are going to denote this by A to the power I in general. Okay, I hope this notation is not confusing. Uh, the only remark here I would want to make is don't think of A as a number. Right? So this is not number raised to the power I. This is some arbitrary group. This element A could be just about anything. And I'm applying the binary operation on A itself, I number of times. So that is this notation A to the power I. Okay, this is not necessarily a number least to the power i. Another way to write this, specifically if uh, the group operation right, dot in a particular example resembles the usual addition. So for example, uh, z with usual addition, if that's the group we are considering or something of that kind, Right, instead of writing e to the power i, I would write this as i into b. Okay, so this notation makes sense. Okay, so 2 plus 2 plus 2, example, 2 belongs to Z, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 would be written as 4 times 2. This dot is not the group operation, this is the usual integer multiplication. Okay, so that would be an example of this. Okay, whereas if the group operation resembles multiplication or if it is just abstract right you usually refer to a operated on itself i times by e to the power i okay so i hope this is clear the question is what is the inverse of this element a to the power i A inverse raised to power i. Why is that the case? Prove that. Sir, here we multiply both sides with A inverse and we constantly try to multiply I times A inverse. Multiply by A inverse on both sides of this equation? No, no, that. Uh, okay. Like, or any other way to prove this? Taking so, inverse both the sides. Taking inverse both the sides, what will happen? Then we apply that property A inverse. If we have to, uh, A into B, so that right. inverse will be B inverse into exactly. A inverse. Right. If I use this, then it should be clear. Once again, I'm not saying the earlier answer is incorrect. 
across the spine. Because of this convention, notational convention, this is nothing but super minus i times. So e inverse i times. Okay. Hope this is clear. Let's move on to the main topic for the class: subgroups. Okay, so what is a subgroup? Right, a uh, subgroup is first of all a non empty subset. Okay, please remember this a non empty subset H of the group G. Okay, now, any non empty subset is not a subgroup. Okay, non empty subset H is subgroup if H with the same group operation. Okay, so please remember. H is a subset of G, so whatever is the group operation on this set G is also well defined on the subset H. Okay, now if I focus only on the elements of this set H, then this set H along with the same binary operation must also be a group. Okay, if that is the case, then H is said to be a subgroup. Okay, and the notation for subgroup is less than equal to so H is the subgroup of G. Right, I hope this is fine. Examples, several of them. So if I take G, so uh, notice there is a small, slight abuse of notation here. Okay, I mean, so when I say G, right, technically it just refers to the set, okay, not the group operation. If I have to write a group, once again, remember it has to be a set along with the binary operation satisfying the four axioms. Uh, from now onwards, there will be a slight abuse. So the set itself will also represent the group. Instead of by the set and the group operation. the same. Okay, so be careful here. So this is Z. Okay, that's your set and the group. So the group operation here is the usual integer addition. If I consider only the set of even integers, right, that would give me the set H. Okay, and uh, another way to write the set of even numbers is 2z. Okay, so I hope you understand what do we mean by 2z. 2z is like this set, 2 times a, so this times is the usual integer addition for every element a in z. Okay, this is the definition. Question in the chat. The binary operation, yes, it has to be the same. Okay, so G is a group, so there is a set and a particular binary operation defined on it. And we are considering a non empty subset H of G with the same group operation. Okay, so you cannot have one binary operation on G and another binary operation on its subset H. 
that is not the case we are considering nobody stops you from defining a new binary operation on edge and in that case if edge forms a group it is just a group it, you cannot call it a subgroup of g clear okay so let us get back to this example so by 2z we mean this set okay for every integer you have to multiply it by 2 and therefore of course you end up with all even numbers right so is this a subgroup yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Okay, there is another comment in the chat just look at that if we merge two groups then the final set will be group or not uh it depends on how you merge two groups do you mean union or something else completely depends on the particular example you are talking of and so, the way you propose to merge yeah. yes harsh go ahead so if we union if you if we union the two group then the resultant will be group or not uh, try answering that question yourself what do you think will it be a group I think yes. Okay, why? Uh, because the binary operation on group one and group two, uh, if if they if that uh, both binary operations are same, then the resultant will be also the applicable for that group. Yeah, but there is a big if, right? Why should both the groups have the same binary operations? Yeah. If the different binary operation, then it should not be. It all depends. See, even is a group with this operation. G two is a group with let's say this group operation. You do G one union G two, right? You first need to have a valid definition of a binary operation on this set. As sets G one and G two, nobody stops you from taking the union of these two sets, right? Which is that is well defined. So you have a set, but then how do you go ahead and define a binary operation? Okay, so in general, you cannot answer this question. But now, what you are saying is, what happens if both the groups are equipped with the same? group operation in that case will the union of the sets with the same binary operation form a group so check the four axioms Sir, we cannot say. I mean, surely not say because if one element from group one and uh, when we do binary operation with group two, then it may or may not resides in that union. Exactly. Set. Will it satisfy the properties that for a group? Will it satisfy all properties? Depends on example. Exactly. So in general, once again. i am assuming harsh's question is at an abstract level right so given that we are not told what the specific sets are in the what what is the specific group operation and the consideration under such a situation can we prove that g1 union g2 will be a group anyone yes it will be a group okay prove that simple hello sir yes sir g1 if it is a group and have the dot operation uh, so like a group all relations are possible in there and same for g2 so while we are unioning them we can just They are all by them satisfying equations. So, 
there would be no need of extra elements like g1 will satisfy its equations with g1 elements and in union we have both <coughs> sorry but like, like if it will not uh, satisfy the closure property if you take uh, any element from a group and then do a binary operation from the other group then the resultant may be outside both the groups uh, right sir what about for all a in g1 and for all b in g2 can you say that this always belongs to g1 union g2 depends on the groups g1 what g1 and g1 were g2 no, exactly. were. so bit yeah, really, yes, once sir. again the question is under abstract uh, conditions right so if we, we are not assuming anything is known or specified about g1 and g2 in general will this be true for any g1 and g2 in other words that's the question no 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 if it is false for even one example then we cannot say that true it is true for all. right so so but on the other hand if i want to show that this is false then Take an example and yeah. yeah. find a counter example. So, can anybody quickly point out a counter example? Matrix is very simple. Uh, take take two groups with example. Okay, go ahead. Take two groups with different identity elements. Like uh, we can take. But remember. The assumption is that the group operation is the same on both groups. Yes, sir. So if we take a group with uh, elements like two and one, and the uh, binary two operation one to be uh, like if we take ele elements with uh, let's say A, B, and uh, binary operation to be product, and if so we what do you mean by product? Product like. Uh, uh, we like if we will be any a and b then the we there should be a sign like a b or some new element or like that g1 is a group so a if it contains only two elements the mm. binary operation amongst mm. a and b must give you an element a or b right okay i mean uh we quickly give you an example all of you are familiar Sir, Sir, uh, can I give group so of matrix example? Matrix example. So what would be G one? Two plus two matrix. All. So you are saying G one is G L two. Yes, sir. And G two is G L three. So is G L three. But are the group operations the same? Yes, sir. Addition. We can take addition. Addition of matrices, okay. but this is addition of two by two matrices, and this is addition of three by three matrices. Yes, yeah, sir. So G one, G one union G two should not. No, but the group operation on this is of addition between two by two matrices. The group operation on G two is addition of three by three matrices, right? Yes, yeah, sir. So they are not the same, isn't it? Not same, yes, sir. Any other example? Anybody wants to try? Okay, let me give you this example. So G one is let's go zero for all x in R. Okay. For uh, all P zero P zero G one operation is just the usual addition. Right. So uh, I hope all of you agree G one is a group. Yes, it a group. 
Yes, sir. G two. It's the same group operation. Does this ring a bell? So, will G? What is actually G one and G two? What are they representing? Geometry. Your uh, geometry knowledge, just this sort of uh, also used specific notation so that. Uh, sort so of is that thing. like a NCR? Or? No, 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 no. This is just okay. So it be my style is slightly misleading. Coordinates. Yes. And, I mean, use the same meaning of this notation. So G one represents x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x Y axis. The union of X and Y axis a group. No. One comma zero, zero comma one. No. This point one comma one, which is of course not in G one union G two. Okay, Harsh, that fine? Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay. Where were we? Uh, right. So, we're looking at examples of subgroups, right? So, the set of all even numbers denoted by 2z is the usual integer addition. We'll also form a subgroup, right? Because addition of any two even numbers will always be an even number. Okay. Uh, what I just said, you must know how to write it mathematically. Okay? So, for example, if I ask you to actually prove that H is a subgroup, how will you write this out? So, how would I mean? Can you can someone tell me what are the steps involved here? If I give you an arbitrary group, an example of a group, and a particular subset of that group and I ask you to see whether that subset is a group or not. How will you proceed? Anyone? So we will first check that uh, uh, sub given subgroup H is a subset of G or not. That is given, right? So, sir, then we will how take... to find whether a subset of a group is a subgroup or not. Uh, sir, we the examples will, check... will take the examples. <laughs> so we will okay. check identity element is contained in subgroup or not. Right. So basically, you have to examples. check. Right, right. Yes, you will have to check all the four axioms. Right, identity. Inverse, associativity, and closure, closure. Sorry. Okay. You have to check all four. Okay. So can you quickly? So while you are writing the proof, remember you have to write it right. Even though in some cases it will be very clear that whether it is a subgroup or not, but if it comes down to writing the proof. You should not skip any of these steps. Okay. Right. So uh, let's just quickly 
hear from you how would you prove that whether this is a subgroup or not to say so uh, closure let's first take up closure uh, yes sir the addition of any to even numbers will be a even number yes but you'll have to prove it right So I know it is very, it sounds very irritating to have to prove that, but uh, and it's, it sounds very obvious. But if it is so obvious, then you should also be able to write it properly, right? So, uh, Excel, sir, uh, 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 we can take it like uh, x, uh, x equals to two a and y equals to two b. So x oh, plus y equals to two. Let's say x and y are two elements in this set two z, right? Yes, sir. That implies x will be of the form some two a and y will be two b for some integers a and b. Yes. Okay. Then x, uh, x plus uh, y would be uh, two a plus uh, two b. b and then two times a plus b. Since Hence, it is even. No. Still, there is one small step. Since a b are in z, a plus b is in z. Therefore, x dot y belongs to two z. Two z. Okay, you must write each and every step that I have listed over here. Uh, sir, this a a comma b belongs to z implies a plus b belongs to z. Uh, this we have to assume, right? No, I, no, 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 no. We are not assuming this. See. 2z is a subset of a group z, right? Ah uh, yes, yes. Sir. So a, b are elements of that group, isn't it? Ah uh, yes, ah uh, yes, yes. We all we already know that it is it is a group. Yes. Exactly. Oh yes. Right. So we have not assumed anything. Be very careful here. Ah uh, yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, you need to overcome. Uh, need to overcome. Some of these intuitive things, or some of these things that we take for granted, okay? these things are sort of so hardwired to us that we don't even think about it. Okay? But now, when we are trying to prove something, remember, uh, we need to start from the axioms. Apart from the axioms, we cannot assume anything else. Yes, so each and every step over here, we have not assumed anything apart from what is given. That is very important. Even though the eventual result was obvious to us even before we did the thing. Got that? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yes sir. Similarly, I think you can try the three out, right? Identity, inverse, and associative. You should be able to write it in this way. But I guess the conclusion is foregone. We all know that a set of even numbers will form a group. So this is one example of a subgroup. Several other examples. So G is the set of complex numbers. Again, with usual addition. And if we take a subset, say the set of only real numbers, with the usual addition, it will still be a group. So therefore, a set of real numbers with addition is a subgroup of a set of complex numbers with usual addition. And given a group, of course, you can have plenty of subgroups. So for the same group, a set of complex numbers, another subgroup would be the set of rational numbers. Okay, so take this maybe as a homework or a practice question. We all know these are subgroups in some sense, but uh, you now need to convert this intuitive knowledge into proper rigorous mathematical proofs. Okay, let's proceed. For examples, we start with the set of complex numbers minus the number zero. Okay, again, 
you just take the subset of set of real numbers minus zero, right? It's a subset of G. You should be able to show that this is actually a, a group in itself. Okay? And therefore, H1 is a subgroup of G. And as with the previous example, you can have several other subsets of the same set which can be groups as well. So, this two is also a subgroup. Any questions? Sir, here H2 is also subgroup of H1. So yes, 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 H2 is also a subgroup of H1. If we consider H1 as a group in itself, yes, that's true. Is that uh, what was your question or you had something more to ask? No, sir. Okay. Right. And you can sort of see here, right? 2Z is a group. Can somebody give me another subgroup of Z or another subgroup of 2Z itself? 2Z, subgroup of 2Z can be 4Z or 6Z. Mm. So I think you get the idea. You can have several subsets. They can be sort of a nested sequence. So H1 is a subset, subgroup of G. H2 is a subgroup of H2. Sorry, H2 is a subgroup of H1. H3 is a subgroup of H2. So on and so forth. So no matter what is your group, you can always have at least two subgroups, no matter what that group is. It's sort of the easiest groups that you can have. One is the subset that contains only the identity element. Okay, remember, since G is a group, from the group axiom, there will be an identity element and from there we prove that there will be only a unique identity element. So if I consider the, sub, the singleton subset that contains only the identity element, right? In an abstract sense, you can show that this H1 will also be a group and therefore H1 will be a subgroup of G. Any I hope this is fine. Closure. So there is one element only. So all you can do is have a binary operation between the same element. Since it's an identity, so E dot E will of course be identity. What is the inverse of E? E, it's e itself. What else? Associativity. By definition, this will be associative e dot e times e. Okay, so in some sense, you have this by brute force. There's only one element, so this is the only thing you can do. The fourth closure we did uh, identity. E is the identity itself, so it's nothing. Okay. So therefore, this subset, right, and this subset exists for any group. Right? It's just the name will be different. Instead of E, if you are considering, let's say, the group of uh, matrices, two by two invertible matrices, this E would be the identity matrix. And so on and so forth, but it's still the identity element. So, in an abstract sense, this set will always be a subgroup. Similarly, the entire set G it satisfies this definition, right? That it is a subgroup subset of itself. And since G is already given to us to be a group, so G taken as a subset of itself will also be always a group. Okay, so 
these three over here are examples taken from specific proofs not abstract proofs the fourth one over here right is applicable for any group Okay, but you can see that uh, there is nothing interesting to see for these two subsets, right? H1 and H2. One is just the identity element, the other is the entire group itself. So, for this reason, these two subgroups are called trivial subgroups. Trivial in the sense that there is nothing interesting about these two subgroups. One contains one, only one element, that's the identity. The other contains the entire set by itself. So, yeah, there is nothing interesting about it. Taken as from the point of view of a subgroup. So, these are called trivial subgroups. And similarly, if for a group G, a proper subset H. I hope all of you know what do we mean by a proper subset. So it cannot be equal to G. Okay, that is what is a proper subset. Okay, so if we have a proper subset H of the group G, and it also happens to be a subgroup, in that case, we call the subgroup a proper subset. It's just borrowing terminology from proper subset right so sir yes sir trivial subgroup a uh, singleton subgroup identity element is also proper subgroup or not yes yes it satisfies the definition right unless of course g itself is only uh, one element okay sir if your group G happens to be also just this, in that case, H equals E is not a proper subgroup. But it is a subgroup, surely. Uh, sir? Yes? Uh, sir, is it possible that uh, suppose G is a group under a, a specific binary operation, then its subset is also a group but under different binary operation? Yeah, why not? Uh, sir, th then that subset will be then will that subset be called subgroup of? Uh, no, no. So once again, let me emphasize this. I think I've done that, but still. So let's say we have a group with a particular binary operation, right? Uh, yes. A non-empty subset H is said to be a subgroup if, this is important, H taken with the same group operation is also a group. Uh, okay, yes. Means uh, because that the structure of that group of that group will be different. That's fine, sir. Yes, yes. So once again, H taken with some other binary operation may be a group or may not be a group. We don't care about that. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, understood, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But if H with star forms a group, but H with dot does not form a group, in that case, H will not be a subgroup of G. And, sir, the reason for it is that uh, the H, comma star, this group is having different structure than the, exactly. than yes. the original group. Uh, so, yes. when we say subgroup of something, or let's say, I mean, in our day to day language, uh, I am a child of my parents, right? So there is, there must be something common there. We don't call any other kid to be a child of a particular set of parents, isn't it? They may still be children. So similarly, H with star may be a group, even if H is a subset of G, right? But when we are looking at the subgroup property, we are we have to look at the same binary operation uh, yes sir it is clear yes sir. oh thank you
All right. <laughs> okay. Now, quick question. So, let's say I give you a group G and I give you a non-empty subset. Okay. That is another thing that I hope I have written the definition. Right. Remember, for a subgroup to be a valid thing, I need to have, I need to take a non-empty subset. Okay. That is again important. I cannot ask whether the null set, null set of, is of course a subset of G, but it cannot be a subgroup. Okay. That's another important point. So if I'm given a non-empty subset of a group G, right, the question is, do we need to verify all the four group axioms? Sir, for associative and crucial property, it will be uh, satisfying only. Sir, if uh, maybe if closure property we should check, I guess. Associative, it will follow on. Associativity should follow by itself. Yes. We, we check the identity yes, element. Yes, should the identity, ele yes, identity element is present in that subgroup or not. Once again. We will check that uh, whether the identity element of the group G is present in subgroup or not. Is that the only thing we need to check? Shit. So, um, no, sir, we have to check universal exist or not in that subgroup. Okay. Okay, how about we do not next? Okay, go ahead. Who's this? Yes. Uh, we do not need to check that identity element because if H is H want to be a group, then it must contain one unique identity. So, no, but so that's the question. The See, of... Read the question carefully. H is a non empty subset, right? And I'm now asking you whether this non empty subset is a subgroup of G or not. Do you think I can, I need not check whether the identity is a part of H or not? Sir, we should so check the identity element. Yes, yes. We need identity check. should be checked. Okay, what else? Yes. So, maybe let me just write down all the four theorems here and then you tell me which ones are, which ones we need to verify, which ones we do not need to verify. Go ahead. Sir, associativity we need not check because uh, if G is group, then uh, all elements in H should be associative. Means associative property will be in subgroup or uh, subset as well. Okay. Right. Other three we can check. Point? What, associativity. sir? Associativity. So, have all of you, do all of you agree with this that we need not verify associativity for a subset of a group? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. G with dot is given to be a group, right? There's no question about that. Since it's a group, this binary operation is therefore associative with respect to all elements of the group G. On G, so therefore, this is associative also on a subset. Any subset. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, associativity, we are happy to do away with this particular check. Right? What else? Sir, now I think. Like, sir, we uh, should I check all these three. I, guess. I, no, all sir, the I think I, identity shouldn't be checked. Like, if it is given group and having same uh, binary operation, so definitely the identity element should be part of it. So, you know, once again, you're not understanding the question. The question is, so a group is given, right? Yes. And now I'm giving you any arbitrary non-empty subset of the. Okay, okay, I got it. I, it is not uh, that identity will be uh, in this upset edge. 
So you think we need to check all the rest three? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Like uh, odd odd numbers are not subgroup. Right. Odd numbers are certainly not a subgroup. Under right? addition. Because it doesn't have zero. The identity is missing. Right. Uh, have we reached a consensus? We do need to check one, two, and four. Anybody who disagrees with this? Oh, okay. All of you agree. I disagree. I'm saying we do not need to check identity if one and four are satisfied. Yes, sir. For that, if we are checking fourth property first, then identity won't be checked. Like. There would be identity if inverse exists. Exactly. So let us still prove that. Okay. So, so what I'm claiming here is I only need to check closure. Right? Fourth property written over here, inverse. If the set H satisfies closure and inverse, then it has to be a subgroup. Why? So what, what do I need to show now? That if we pick uh, two elements from same group, then it should reside in that particular group only. No, 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 no. Question is, what I'm claiming is, if the subset H is closed with respect to the binary operation, and if every element of the set H has an inverse in H itself, then H then identity the must yes identity yes. must exist yes right then two must hold. Okay, and I think it is easy to see so. Assume H is a subset of the group G and it is closed and it satisfies the inverse property, right? So again, I hope uh, you understand what do I mean by this inverse thing, okay? Then let A belong to H, okay? So I'm picking just any arbitrary, arbitrary element in the subset H. Now, since H satisfies the inverse property, right, from 4, A inverse exists and is in H. Okay, remember A inverse exists, this existence of A inverse is guaranteed in the group G. When I'm making this assumption 4 here, I'm making this assumption for the subset H. So, A inverse is given to be an element of the set H. Then what is the last step here? So a dot a inverse. A dot inverse exist in H. According to closure, it will be ideal. dot A inverse is equal to A inverse dot A is equal to E. This also is in H. Okay, so we are done, right? Yes, sir. And how about the converse of this? Let me just um, give this statement clearly. What I'm saying is an arbitrary non empty subset H of a group G, if it satisfies closure and inverse, then H must be a subgroup. That is what we have proved, right? Yes. Similarly, sir. if H is a subgroup, then H must satisfy closure and inverse. That I hope is obvious, right? Yes, sir. Right. So in another way, what I am trying to say is we have given 
another equivalent definition of a subgroup. Okay, and this is proposition number two. Let H be a non-empty subset of a group G. Then H is a subgroup of G. Emphasize this if and only if H is closed under the group operation and for every element A in the subset H, A inverse must be in H. Clear? In the last slide, we proved if A and B are true, then H is a subgroup of G. Right? What this proposition statement also says is if H is a subgroup of G, then A and B are also true. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Right, and the second statement I hope is obvious. If I give you a subset H of G, which is a subgroup, then by definition, H with that binary operation has to be a group. That is a group, it has to satisfy all the four axioms. And A and B are just two of them. So, that is the proof of proposition two. Any doubts here? Take that as a no. You can sort of stretch this uh, little more. Right. So as of now, from four axioms, we got down to two. In some sense, you can combine both A and B into one requirement. That is your next proposition. So let H be a non-empty subset of a group G. Then H is a subgroup of G. Once again, if and only if for every pair of elements A, B in the set H, A, B inverse belongs to H. Please read the statement of this proposition carefully. Then we will together work out the proof. Assume for all AB in H, AB inverse belongs to H. Okay, so we are going to make this assumption and what are we supposed to show? Closure and inverse satisfied. Right. How do we show that? So, sir, for inverse, we can take A to be equal to identity. So, how can... Achha. Okay, let's do that then. But, uh, sir, like A, A inverse will belong to H and then B will also belong no, no, to H. No, 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 no. Where, how did you come to that conclusion that A inverse belongs to H? Right, please. Again, this is like, uh, although you people are not engineers yet, but this is like an engineering mentality, right? We, tend to assume more than what is given. So what is given so, is... Well, if we take of, uh, one of them uh, as an identity, then we can prove that... A can we do that? Just a minute. So that's my question. Ah, yes, sir, because assume, B inverse is given, then we can see for B dot B inverse. 
so these are just different ways and again remember we have just shown one way right if and only if so we have just shown that if for every a b in h a b inverse is in h then h forms a subgroup the other way round is also true according to the proposition so if h is a subgroup then for every pair of elements a b in h a b inverse has to be in h that i think is again straightforward and uh, but please remember writing is as important as the uh, thinking behind the proof okay. so for you it may look obvious and to some extent it is obvious you must learn how to write proofs properly 
Okay, there must be no step in which you are making an assumption which does not, which cannot be proved. Okay, and if it can be proved, then you should prove. Okay, so I hope it is clear to everyone. Sir, okay. in in this assumption, instead of A B inverse, can we take A inverse B? Try it out. What will happen? I guess we can take. Uh, oh. It's just a uh, different name given, right? Yes, sir. Okay, work it out. How will you show identity? Same way. Same way right? So, okay. yes. Uh, inverse, again, the same way. It's just using whatever you assume for B, you're now assuming for A. Right? Yes. So yes, you can equivalently prove that as well. Okay. So I'm once again leaving the rest half of the proof of this proposition for you guys to work out. Okay. Please remember if and only if implies two things. Okay. So don't ignore the other thing. All right. Yet another way to see if a particular non-empty subset of a group is a subgroup or not. This case, it applies to a finite subset. Okay, so something you need to remember. Let H be a non-empty but a finite subset of a group G. If that is the case, then Everything boils down to only one axiom, that is closure. Okay, is the statement of the proposition understood? Once again, let me reread this. Sir, so can you explain again? Yes, surely. So I'm given a group G with, so since it's a group, it comes with a set and a binary operation. The group G may be finite or infinite. Okay, there's no restriction on G. Then I'm given a subset H, which is subset of G. H is non-empty. Okay, and Third condition here that we are assuming is that the set is a finite set. Okay? In the sense, the number of elements or the cardinality, all of you are familiar with this term, cardinality? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the yes. cardinality of this subset has to be finite. In that case, the only condition you need to check in order for this subset H to be a subgroup is closure. That's the only condition that is important. Everything else can be inferred from this. Okay, is the statement clear? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. So, CH is a subset of G. Cardinality of H is finite but greater than zero. And H is closed under the group operation dot. What do we need to prove in order to show that H is a subgroup? Inverse. Inverse and the yes. closure is there, so inverse mainly, right? Okay, so 
let's say so it is a non empty subset right so there will be at least one element in it let's call it a fine now what happens if i keep on applying a binary operation on a to itself So for example, a square, what can we say about a square? Once again, remember when I say a square, don't think of a as a number. Okay? A square means a dot a. It is a itself. A it should be. It belongs to h. In h. And whatever is true for a square is true for all powers of a. Right? All of this belongs to a, h. But how many such elements can we have? Can we keep on generating new and new elements? Uh, yes, no, but they will repeat after some time. Right, they have to repeat simply because H is a finite set. a raised to let's say m will be equal to a raised to n for some mn which are positive integers and let's say m is greater than n without loss of generality then what can we do we should uh, uh, multiply inverse of a n both side then we will get a raised to m what sir which side should we multiply left right both side a raised to n in inverse no, no, no. in the sense pre multiply or post multiply so, not I guess both will be same. Right. So, because it's just A with itself. A raised to M into A raised to N inverse will be equal to A raised to N A raised to N inverse, which of course is identity by definition. So what does that imply? How can we write this? A raised to M into A raised to N inverse. Nothing but k raised to m minus n. That's your identity, and this belongs to h. Right? Yes, sir. So identity belongs to h. What do we need to show? We need to show that the inverse has to exist. Uh, sir, but we are not given that a raised to and whole inverse belongs to H. So how can we take that? A no, no, no. To whole no, so all I'm doing is I'm cancelling out a raised to n from both sides, right? That is what it means. Remember, uh, I think it was proposition one, uh, second last number we could cancel out uh, elements from both sides isn't it no sir we have to multiply inverse first i mean so here i'm writing it that way but you can so okay let me write this means sir uh, inverse is not in h but uh, it is in uh, means group G. So, so what does A raised to M mean? In this. Right? M times. And what does A raised to N mean? I dot A N times. N times. Then
what does this mean uh, means uh, m minus uh, n times a on the left hand side should be uh, at the identity element exactly right so yes that make sense ah uh, yes sir yes sir see once again here how do you do that you multiply both sides by a inverse see i'm not saying that a inverse as of now is in h but i can multiply by a inverse on both sides right inverse may be yes. in g right but it doesn't change this equation yes sir was that the point that was confusing you yes sir because it was not given that a inverse also belongs to h that's why yes so we are not as of now using that at all right we are not saying a inverse belongs to h as far as the equation is concerned this equation can be reduced into this equation right uh, yes sir yes now now it is clear now it is clear okay okay great so identity exists right any doubts on that if not from this how do we get to the point which says that a inverse exists in it so we look at this i can rewrite a raised to m minus n as a raised to m minus n minus 1 dot e right and similarly i can also write a raised to m minus n as a dot a raised to m minus n minus 1 In both cases this has to be a full identity so what is the conclusion what can we conclude from this a a is to m minus n minus 1 is minus 1 in is is the inverse of okay and does this belong to h yes sir ah uh, yes sir due to closure property yes all right so this implies inverse exists for any element in h cause we did not choose a in any specific way a was any arbitrary element of h therefore what we have shown is that h is a subgroup any doubts with this if not we'll stop here right on time today thankfully i request uh, the scribes of the last class to submit their notes so that i can upload the lecture slides as well as the recording okay and similarly scribes for this class please try and submit on time maybe i'll sort of uh, put a deadline of a week okay, so Tuesday's class, the scribes must submit their notes by, let's say, late Monday night okay, before the class begins. The next Tuesday's class. Similarly, Friday's class, the scribes should submit it before next Friday's class. Okay, so we'll stop here for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending the lecture. I hope. Uh, going well in case you have any issues please feel free to let me know in any way you want
Bye-bye. See you on Friday.